What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve. I'm Lindsay. Today we're going to be ratting to a tour of the House of Lords. Now, I learned a little bit about the House of Lords probably over a year ago at this point. I did a reaction to a very short video about the basics of the House of Lords, but I never actually got to see what the House of Lords looks like. And Lizzie don't know anything at all about the House of Lords. What is the House of um, Lords? Basically, the House of Lords is kind of like our Senate in a way. Then you have the House of Commons, mm -hmm. which is kind of like our House of Representatives. You know, there's basically a lower chamber and upper chamber. Um, you know, basically the same as it is here in a way. Right. Obviously, there are similarities and differences. Um, I think at some point we'll probably check out uh, a video about how the works. how it works and whatnot. <laughs> Anyways, enough rambling from us. Let's go ahead and dive in here and check out a tour of the House of Lords. <gasps> so here we are in Central Lobby. This is the heart of Parliament. <sighs> and we are equidistant between the Commons Chamber and the Lords Chamber. Oh wow. my god. <laughs> okay, like first off, this is, looks very grand already. Yeah. Uh it, beautiful. It, it you know, I think our Congress is a is a pretty beautiful building, but this is amazing, right? Um, but the other thing I noticed, it's set up kind of in the same way our Congress is. <laughs> the House of Lords over here and the uh House of Commons is over there. Wow. Usually this space is teeming with people. It's where any member of the public wow. can come. But today we're um. here to talk about the House of Lords. So we're going through to the Peers Lobby. It looked like a kind of like a cathedral. Cathedral, but even almost even fancier. Wow. Beautiful. So here we are in the Peers Lobby. Again, this is usually teeming with people. They might be members of the public who have come to watch our proceedings and they walk through here to go up to the gallery where they watch what's going on in the chamber. But through those gates is the chamber where, of course, most of our work is done, whether it's questions, debates, or part of the legislation. That is where it all happens. The press reports show how damaging that can be, but I shall indeed take all the noble lord's points on board. We're right at the heart of wow. the lord, the chamber, and it's in the chamber that we debate government policy, pass laws, and generally scrutinize the activities beautiful, of man. the whole of what's going Look on. Look at that. Today. The detail. It is gorgeous. Wow. My goodness, it's grand. Yeah, it looks I, beautiful. I remember briefly seeing a little shot of kind of the bottom and stuff, but mm -hmm. I didn't get a still of like this. When, yeah, because like just looking at the floor, yeah, like, you don't when, when there's people it, in it and stuff. Yeah, you don't expect, you don't expect the rest to look like this. Dude, that's beautiful. Look at the stained glass. This literally looks like a church or something. It's beautiful. Like, wow, man. They, why, why? I, I wonder how old this building is and how old what we're looking at is, and I'm sure it's really old at this point. But it just, it just goes to show you that they do not make. Like they would they even make something like this nowadays if they had to rebuild some sort of I don't parliament know, or something? Probably not. And despite oh my the gold leaf, the carved wood, the heavily uh, embossed leather, it's wow. actually very much a working chamber. And I'm wow. standing at the dispatch box, which was where government ministers lead with government business. However, I can report to the House that a pilot to return these bookings. Behind me on my right here is the government side and most of these benches are occupied by the peers who are of the government party, save that right at the far end over my shoulder is where the bishops always sit. I'm now crossing the chamber of the House of Lords onto the opposition side, and the opposition sit along the benches on my left, and it's not only the main opposition party, it's also the crossbenchers who are the independents. And one of the unusual characteristics of the House of Lords is that there is a large independent presence, which means that no one party has an overall majority. There are three other important parts of the chamber that I think it's useful to know about. And the first one is the Woolsack, which is where the Lord Speaker sits. Over to my right here is the clerk's table, and the clerks are the administrators, the civil servants, who keep us all right. And finally, over my... Oh, my, oh my goodness! That's what I kept on seeing, like, just a second ago, and I'm like, wow, that is magnificent. 
I like how, at least the way he describes it, it makes it seem very unbiased. Like, it seems much more effective than ours is. Well, I, I think the difference is that, you know, smaller parties have more of a chance of getting into uh, into government in general there. Mm -hmm. Like That's here, like here, if you're a third party, you basically stand like next to no chance, unfortunately, getting in. I'm not a fan of our two-party system here. Mm -hmm. And it, it truly is a two-party system because like you can't even get other parties upon the debate stage. Really. Or on the ballot. Now you can't, you can <laughs> occasionally you see uh, one of the smaller parties, uh, you know, get some, win some kind of local election occasionally, mm -hmm. but you never see them win a federal election. And it's so frustrating. And I really want to learn more about how the different parties and whatnot operate. I yeah. want to learn more about the parties in general uh, because I really haven't looked into that too much. You know, I, I, I got a couple of the uh, party names in my head, but I don't really know anything about them, to be honest. Right. Um, but that's magnificent, guys. Wow. My shoulder is the royal throne. So here we are in the Grand Committee Room, but it's also wow. known as the Moses Room. And you will see from that picture of Moses coming down the mountain, why it's known as that. It's used for debates and uh, where we discuss some of the detail of the legislation. It enables the chamber to be used for one bit of legislation and here for another. And uh, the minister sits here at the dispatch box, his civil servants sit behind him, and members of the public can sit here and watch the proceedings in a very intimate experience That's for cool. them. That's cool. Wow. We can do that here. <laughs> not like not like that, generally speaking. Do you have to like get some sort of tickets or something to or do that? Or can you just show up? Because it obviously there's limited room. Right. So maybe, maybe you can. Maybe first come, first serve. I would love to do that. I don't know if me not being a British citizen could do that. <laughs> but I, I would love to do that if I had an opportunity yeah. to. Let me know in the comments, guys. Is it possible for like a foreigner to go in there? I would guess that would be kind of like maybe not allowed i'm thinking a foreign I mean, you really like what business do you have right like what business does someone who's a foreigner have in there it i just find very it interesting yeah. right that, that's the thing it'd be really interesting we're in one of the division lobbies this is where we settle our arguments there are two division lobbies one for content which means you're happy with the uh, argument and the other is the not content where you disagree and we're in the not content if there is a dispute it is put to the vote. When the vote is called, bells ring throughout the Houses of Parliament and you have eight minutes to walk through this lobby. After eight minutes, they see how many people have walked through. They go into the chamber and they will read out who has won and who has lost. And that's the way we settle our arguments. This is the Royal oh. Gallery and wow. the gallery is used for ceremonial occasions which don't take place that often, uh, but it's used wow. every day for meetings. For example, here we have a table, six chairs, there are other tables like this, and uh, there may be a meeting which has been set up involving people from outside the Houses of Parliament, or it may be simply peers hatching together some plan. Sometimes it's very crowded and very busy, there's a lot going on, and uh, other times it's very quiet and slightly, slightly spooky, particularly. Wow. I just wanted to stop for a second and get a look at this. I love this. I, I do too. Oh, I, wow. It's grand, man. But you know, I think it would take me a moment to really get a, a to to really grasp how their government functions. Mm -hmm. For the simple fact, the terminology differences, right. like peers, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, and just, you know, then they use terms like MPs. Obviously, that's not the House of Lords. That's uh, House of Commons, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and then, you know, and then there's like uh, the prime minister and, you know, and there's all these terms. That, I know a lot about our government, mm -hmm. but I don't know, you know, it's it's hard to, you know, take what I know with our and government apply and apply it because yeah. the terminology is <laughs> so different. Yeah. And obviously, I can see so many differences in the way they function here. Mm -hmm. But I will say, I, I can appreciate the way it sounds like they operate. It sounds smoother. It sounds like you would get through arguments maybe a bit cleaner or it seems faster. more accountable mm -hmm. and less biased, yeah. which are all great things in or, terms of... Of course, that might be because I despise 
our current like two party system so yeah. much. So many of our politicians are bald and paid mm-hmm. for. That's they, the big one. They are just they go in with no money, and then five years later, they're worth tens of millions of dollars, and you know, like they just sold out. Yeah, and they're they're not they're not looking out for the interests of the American people. I don't know if that's if you guys have a lot of problem with that in the UK. I'm sure there is some of that. There's probably yeah. in every government. There's going to be corruption, um, but I, I wonder on what level. Uh, you Probably know, not to the same extent. I can imagine because our government is so corrupt. It, like, it, it doesn't matter which side, both sides are corrupt. Yeah. It's just you get corruptible people in government and, you know, they get corrupted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, anyways, let's continue. Late at night. That way is the chamber. But it's on the upper floor that a lot of the work is done in the committee rooms. So massive. That's crazy, man. Well, we're up on the committee corridor uh, uh, with the House of Lords chamber Fairness. over there and the river over there. You just get that sense of everything's alive here. All the issues that are worrying people out there in the street, they're actually going to be talking about here in this corridor. Well, we're up in one of the committee rooms. Uh, some of the rooms are bigger than this, some are smaller, but they all pretty much look the same. And this is where we do the important work of scrutinising government policy and trying to influence future public policy debates. You'll have people from all parties, and indeed no parties, coming together to really dig deeply into an issue that we feel strongly needs investigating, be it energy or transport or how we're going to feed the world in the future. So these doors here mark the end of the House of Lords committee corridor. Down below us is the central lobby, which is the central point of the Houses of Parliament, with two chambers flowing off from it. The House of Lords on one side, House of Commons over there. There's not much else to say, but wow. (laughs) Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful building to go to work in. Yeah. I kind of want to learn, like, figure out when this building was built. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll go look at that real quick. And uh, I just want to, I want to make sure it's the building I have in my head. All right, guys. So, yes, it's called the Palace of Westminster. Okay, so that is where. <gasps> it was built in 1016. Wait, wait, no. It says built 1016 and later. Like, obviously, demolished, there's additions and Demolished 1834 due to fire. Oh, my God. That must be the Great Fire of London. I haven't, like learned about that but i know that there was a massive I'm fire obviously it was on purpose so somebody like, wow that's a shame that that got burned down so so this building isn't nearly as old this building was built between 1840 and 1876 but i guess it's on the spot and i'm curious does parts it look it, do you think parts of it are still original? i don't know i'm but um i'm i'm guessing that it's um this may look similar I'm guessing that they probably used to, yeah. But um, so it's not as old as I thought it was, but it's beautiful, mm-hmm. so beautiful. I was wondering what you called it, like, like the, I, I thought it was like okay, this is called the House of Parliament or mm-hmm. something like that. That's what I was looking up originally, but it's called the Palace of Westminster. Well, it said it was originally constructed in the 11th century as a royal palace. And it was the primary residence of the kings of England until 1520. That makes a lot of sense, you know, as as basically the British people gave the monarch less power, mm-hmm. took power from the monarch, they used the palace there, I guess, to, you know, create the government. Yeah. I guess that's basically what happened. The palace contains chambers for the House of Commons, House of Lords, and a monarch, and has a floor space of, wow, 1.2 million square feet. That is massive. It's also had to have repairs after the Second World War. Wow. Including rebuilding the destroyed commons chamber. Oh, wow. Okay, so the commons chamber, it looks like it's still fairly, uh, well, you know. Yeah. Was I don't know if they had to. Yeah, they maybe not the whole thing. It sounds like they just kind of had to rebuild part of it or something. I don't know. Um, but, wow, guys. That's crazy, man. All right. We need to look into the Great Fire of London. Mm-hmm. Is that... I'm guessing that is droid on the fire. That's got to... Is that the fire of the Great Fire of London is my question. The blaze was caused by the burning of small wooden tally sticks. So, I don't know. Let us know in the comments, guys. Was the fire that destroyed... uh, Was it always the Palace of Westminster? I think so. Was the fire that destroyed this building originally 
was it the great fire of London or was this just a fire specifically about, you know, with this building? Either way, we need to look at the great fire of London sometime yeah. soon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you got anything you want to add? No. It's Incredible. Awesome. Beautiful, beautiful building. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to see the House of Commons, but um, that one's obviously newer than the... Um, that was the Lord's book. All right, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow us on our journey to discover anything and everything about the UK and Ireland. Till next time, guys. Peace. Bye.